Kevin has built himself a very, very successful seven-figure business, and he's gonna share some tips and tricks for you guys on how you can do the same. So without further ado, how about a nice warm welcome from Mr. Kevin Thatcher. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. All right. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. So what will this have to do about real estate? Absolutely nothing. Tonight's not going to be about real estate. Tonight, we designed a presentation just to talk about business, to talk about successes, to talk about failures, to talk about um, relationships, to talk about networking, to talk about business plans, everything that I personally feel a person needs to have a successful business. Now, can you get lucky selling a widget? Absolutely. Maybe, uh, what do you call it, Marcelo? A um, NFT. Can you make million dollars selling an NFT? Absolutely. But long-term success of a business, you need some type of plan. So that's what we're gonna cover today. As Lex said, I, I, call, I wrote a couple of books, but the one we're gonna talk about tonight is Rescue Your Business. Um, you'll see on the back of the card, we're actually gonna give away a few. Uh, on the back of the business card I left there, there's a text in number. So if you text in, if you want to win a copy, I think we're giving away five copies. Um, so you can just text in and it'll pick a winner, I think, at 830. Um, but we're going to cover a couple of chapters that are in the book that I thought were the most important because I only have a limited amount of time tonight. But most importantly, the emotional journey that I took that I included in this book. So to give you a little bit of an idea, I was a firefighter, as you can tell. I moved down here 20 days before 9-11. So for those of you that were around during 9-11 and remember it, I was a firefighter up there, moved down here, and it was probably one of the most painful times of my life. And why? Because I had friends up there, family up there. I didn't know who was where. I'll never forget, I probably dialed New York people maybe 10,000 times that day to try and find out where were they, what were they doing. And there's a reason that I, I share that is because in business, relationships are super, super important for me. And I always say that firefighters, police officers, our military, nurses, doctors, they don't do it for the paycheck. Are there any nurses, doctors, firefighters in the room? No one? Military? Anyone former military? Thank you for your service. Uh, they don't do it for the paycheck. Firefighters don't do it for the paycheck. So I learned through this process what is most important in a relationship because I wanted to run back to New York when 9-11 happened because I wanted to be with my friends and be with my fellow firefighters, right? I didn't want to be here watching it on TV. I wanted to be there because these people all have one thing in common and that's that they go in when everyone else is going out. And I'll never forget... A couple of years later, I was at, uh, anyone live in Coconut Creek? I think you do, right? So there was a bagel shop called Big Bite Bagel, which was on uh, Lions Road in the Sawgrass. I'll never forget, I was in there, it was a holiday. We were in there, the place was packed. I mean, you couldn't get a table. And all of a sudden, there was a massive explosion in the kitchen. A guy left a bunch of stuff right next to the uh, burner. Huge explosion, I mean, you felt it. Everyone felt the heat. The entire restaurant ran where? Out. Out, where did I run? In. And then people always ask me, well, why? I said, I don't know. It's just because that's what I do. That's what I know. So in business, I decided when we opened up our title company, we're figuring out these relationships. I said, relationships are so super important. I joined networking organizations and I just realized that I need to be able to add more value, build better relationships, and hopefully business will come back to me. Right? That makes sense. So all of you that are looking to build a business, whether you're a real estate agent, real estate investor, public insurance adjuster, headhunter, you need to build a business based on relationships, based on things we're going to talk about where you're going to see the business just continues to flow in. Why? I don't know. It's just because you've built a great foundation. And there are many successful investors in the room here. I always say there's probably about maybe 10%, maybe 15% of the people in the room are going to actually be successful maybe 5% are really gonna kill it. And some of those 5% are in the room that are just doing deals constantly. And you watch them on social media, it's like, why them and not me? So we're gonna talk about that. So we're gonna talk about a lot of, the book contains a lot of my failures. It contains when the crash of the market, how many were in this business in the crash? Probably not many. So it was super, super painful. 
I went from doing 30 deals a month, which was great, to three deals. I went from money in the bank account to no money in the bank account. I went to cutting payroll checks on a cash advance on my credit card because I had to pay my assistant and I had no deals closing. I lost my house, I lost my wife, I lost my car. I literally lost everything. I was three quarters of a million dollars in debt and I learned through networking how to rebuild, rebrand, build better relationships and create what I call an endless stream of referrals. And that's what I hope I'm gonna be able to instill in you tonight that you're gonna walk out of here maybe with a couple of tips that you're gonna be able to implement into your business. Maybe you'll pick up the book and figure out some of the other tips. And then in six months, 12 months, 24 months, you're gonna come back and be like, you know what, I did that. I implemented this into my business and I generated referrals because of it. Is that fair enough? Yeah. So this was a picture of me. Uh, actually, no, I don't have the picture of me, but so that was when I was up in New York and again, you know, it's all about adding value to people. It's all about running in when others are running out. And think about that in your own business. Whatever you do, don't do it for what? The money. Eliminate the money. The money will come. Do it for a bigger purpose, which we'll talk about. So this is my family. This is my son, Jackson, in the middle, my wife, Alana, my daughter. And yes, those are our horses. We have a uh, three-acre farm right down the street here in um, Parkland and we have tons of tons of animals. Once COVID hit, we decided we just wanted a different life. We wanted to just get out of the HOA type communities, move out to the country, but still be close enough to be able to obviously get to uh, business and, and our friends and family. A Couple of books I wrote, uh, we are gonna give away the one. So if you text in, you can just text on the back, but these are the five that I authored. You'll get a link if you text in, if you wanna buy the one. I have a couple of copies if you wanna buy it. Um, most of them are real estate books, but the one, as I said, we're going to talk about tonight is, is really the one that, that I think is most important to someone that wants to build a business. You want to learn about title insurance? Great. You want to learn about real estate? Great. I'd rather watch paint dry than talk about title insurance, but I wrote a book about it. So this way people do read it. People do save money on it. Um, so they are some great books, but tonight we're going to focus on the one book. So a little bit about my qualifications. As like I said, I met him a long time ago. I still do closings actually with his mentor. So imagine how honored I am to see someone grow, right? I mean, we've been great friends for many years, but to watch someone that walked into my office with his first deal, and now this guy has 15 or 20 students in the room that still continue to come into my business. So when we talk about creating an endless stream of business, that's a perfect example how his mentor sent him over to me, and to this day, we're still doing business 18 years later. So it's super important to really focus on these relationships. So I've been doing real estate and these are kind of just a little bit more of the, the plug kind of for the title company and then we'll get into the book. Um, but what I think sets us apart and makes us unique, so I do have a real estate broker's license. I've been uh, a real estate broker longer than I owned a title company. And the reason I say that is because we find ourselves as solution, coming up with, with solutions for people. When they call us with a problem, with a challenge, we think outside the box. We try and, and think of it from a different avenue. So like today, Vivi, who, who works with me here, um, we were today on a deal, a challenge. We have a foreclosure sale coming up on Monday and we're just trying to figure out like, how do we strategize to get this deal across the table? So my 20 years in this business is what gets us there. When those problems happen, Eli, I'll tell you, Eli's a great client of ours too and there's a problem, calls us, I get on the phone and we, we solve the problem. So we try and be problem solvers and that's where the experience comes into play. So hopefully you'll enjoy tonight. Hopefully you'll select me for your next closing if you have the opportunity. But more important, what I'm here to talk about is how I built a business from nothing to something, lost it all, and then built it back up for the last several years to be a seven figure business. And I want every person to build a seven figure business. Like that's what you almost need today in order to live a great life and be able to retire. You can't do it on a 20, 30, 40, $50,000 salary. You need to be making at least six plus figures a year. You need to save it and build it up to where hopefully you can get seven figures invested somehow turning properties, right? That's what a lot of you are here to do. Some of you own businesses, but that's kind of what you're looking to do, right? Who, who would like a million dollars a year in a business, right? 
So he asked before how many people are in real estate. It was three people. Here, the whole room says you'd like a million dollars, right? You want to know how to do it. So hopefully my failures will teach you that. Anyone read this book? So a few of you. So this is a great book because there's a great illustration in it that really talks about the core foundation of how I got started. So when I first started in networking, I joined an organization called BNI. Does anyone know that besides the front row? So a few of you do. I know Marco, I met in BNI a long time ago. Um, it stands for Business Network International, the largest networking organization in the world. I joined as a member. I hated public speaking. And I, I joined it, I took all of their advanced courses, I eventually became a director, I was running the Broward County region, and it was all based on what? Relationships, right? All based on relationships. So the relationships in your business, you really need to get to that core center circle, right? Because if you see here, what you do, if you don't know what you do, you're in the wrong business, right? Everyone has a product, a service maybe you sell, Maybe you save people from foreclosure. What is the easy part of a business? But now you have to start taking that circle and narrowing it down. So we talk about, well, how do you get there, right? So you can read here, right? How do you get there? How do you do it? What makes you special? So I just told you what makes us special. 20 plus years experience, I've been doing this a long, long time. I've seen a lot of failures. So what makes you special in your business that nobody else does? Like I know Marco's my executive recruiter. He's hired a couple of our employees. And what sets him apart is he says, I'm gonna find you someone. Guaranteed I'm gonna find you someone. And he has a strategy and a plan that he sells you on when, when you have that, that intro call with him that you feel confident enough that he's gonna do everything he can possibly do to get you someone hired, right? So now he knows how he does it. But more importantly, why? Why do you do what you do? If you don't know what you do and why you do it, you're not gonna have a successful business. So you need to figure out why you do what you do, whether it's saving a homeowner from foreclosure, right? Whether it's solving problems for clients, public insurance adjuster, getting people maximum payment for their claims, you need to figure out what problem you're solving for people. Why are you doing it? It can't just be for money. It can't just be to build a successful business. There has to be a reason. My wife and I get so much joy knowing that we supply a lifestyle to 12 employees here and we have 65 employees up in Toronto, Canada. We get so much enjoyment knowing that when COVID hit, we didn't let one person go because we've built a successful business and we didn't have to. Did we dip into our savings when COVID hit? Absolutely, but we did not let anyone go. That's what we do. We built relationships and we love our employees as if they're family. So you have to figure out why do you do what you do? Our business is an avenue just to be able to give to charity, to be able to, to support our employees' lifestyles and obviously make money, right? Money's in the end. You have a business because you wanna make money, but you need to know why you do what you do. So let's talk about how to network. And, and these slides are all broken up in chapters of the book. So when you get the book, you'll see there are chapters and then there are assignments at the end of every chapter. And the re a reason I did it that way is because I want people to be able to take the book and focus on one chapter per month. So I, I ask people to read the book and there's people that ask me to coach them on the book. So I, I sit down with them, I say, read the book. And then let's go back and sit down and go over one chapter at a time. And there's an assignment at the end of every chapter that you have to do, obviously, to be able to learn about the chapter, but more importantly, implement that chapter in your business. So we talk about why would you want to network? Who networks here? Right, you all walked in the room here. Now, normally in this section of the meeting, we do what's called business card aerobics, which is where I give everyone three or four minutes to walk around, collect as many business cards as you get, but with Corona, we're not gonna do it. We're not shaking hands and passing out business cards. You can do that after. But that's normally what we do. And, and what strategy are we looking to teach you? That you picked up a lot of business cards and what? That's it, right? You didn't really do much. And there's a reason we do it, right? Because we want you to pick up these business cards, but we wanna teach you a bigger lesson in this strategy that you really should be focusing on how many people in the room. 
I say three. You should focus on three people. Focus to meet three people that you can build a relationship with, that you can change the trajectory of your business. Just three. Bring three business cards and just meet those three people and spend time getting to know them, getting to know about their family, getting to know about their business, getting to know where they live, where they lived before, why did they move here? Because that builds a much deeper relationship. So a lot of times when you come to these events, I'll be standing in the back of the room, maybe talking to one person. I don't go around networking. I'll talk to one person and maybe next month another person because I'd rather get to know people at a little bit of a deeper level and then we create huge opportunities together. And that's how you build a successful business. So how do you choose the right network? A lot of people came here because you're in what? Real estate, right? You wanna learn how did Lex teach people how to buy, fix, flip properties, make a lot of money. You have to pick your networks wisely. How many networks should you have? Three. Three? Three. My lucky number is three, so you'll get to know I use three a lot. So you have business, right? Professional business networks. What else? Personal. Personal, which would include? Uh, immediate family, friends. Family and friends. And what's the third one? Your line of work. No, line of work is professional, so you're here. The third one is gonna be the gym, maybe your kid's soccer team, so it's gonna kind of be a hybrid of people. So it's not necessarily your family, and it's not professional, but it's gonna be the middle. So if you go to a church or a synagogue, David, who was up here speaking, does so much business through his synagogue, it'd make your head spin. He has so many lenders that are in there. So you go to these organizations and you start meeting people that can honestly change your business. You never know who's in the room. So you need to find out who are these people, go to these events, get to know them, get to build a deeper relationship with them, and then in return, you do a lot of business together. How often should you go to these networks is another thing I like to teach people. Some events are weekly, right? BNI is weekly, chamber meetings sometimes weekly, monthly. These two gentlemen in the front, we do an executive mastermind we do once a month. So we meet once a month, more a uh, little bit higher level. So you have to decide what works for you for the organization. But you can't just go all the time to all these events. The ones that go to constant chamber meetings, all these events are not doing anything. They're not doing any business. You need to figure out what are your core events that you're gonna attend. And we'll talk about it when we talk about a business plan. And then you start going to them and you say, I'm gonna to go to this one, this one, this one. These are the three I'm gonna to go to. This is how often they are. This is how often they meet. And this is more importantly, what my strategy is when I go to these meetings. Because you have to have a strategy, right? So like when we go to our executive mastermind, I'll try and sit next to someone different every time. So at the end of 12 months, you'll sit next to 12 different people and you have one on each side. So you go through 24 people. How many people are in the group? About 20, 24, 22. So you're gonna get to meet people at a much deeper level. Now, what do you do the day of the event? How many of you did any research about this event before you got here? Nobody? All right, so you're all learning something new, right? You should research the event you're going to. And I reference a lot of different events because I go to them, but like this mastermind, when Marco invited me, I wanted to say, who are the members at this thing? I don't want to just go just because it's a good steak, although it's a really great steak. But I don't want to just go because there's a great steak. I want to go because there's an opportunity to change the lives of others and in return you get business. So you need to start researching who's the group, who are the group members. How many of you registered on meetup.com? How many of you clicked on anyone else on meetup.com to see the other members of the group? Okay, so you did some research, right? That's research. You register to the event, you click on the members, who are they, where do they work, what are they into? Maybe they're into Airbnb. So now Andy knows, you know, oh wow, they're into Airbnb too. I want to meet that person. Right? So you need to know the events that you're going to and who are you looking to meet. Maybe you go to the church or the synagogue. You want to meet, you know, you go to the church, you want to uh, meet your pastor. Maybe. Maybe there's a huge opportunity to help the people in the organization. So you need to come up with a plan. Follow-up is key. 
Most people will leave here and not follow up with anybody. You're just not going to do it. Why? Who can tell me why? Forget? Possibly? Laziness? That's a big one. Fear. Fear of what? Rejection. Fear of rejection because they're going to tell you what? They're not interested? Move on. But that's the number one issue, why people don't follow up, because it's the fear of rejection. They won't pick up the phone and call. Fear of rejection. They won't send an email. They won't. If I go on, uh, sometimes I'll go on these Zoom meetings because everything's on Zoom now, and I'm going to just start friend requesting the people that I see. If you make an impact on me, I'm going to friend request you on Facebook, connect with you, say hello to you, get to know you. Most people won't do it. They're afraid. What if they don't accept me? What if, you know, we don't get along? What if they don't want to do business with me? So you need to really have a plan and then have a plan with the follow-up. So everyone at the end of tonight's meeting, meet one or two people, grab a card, get to know them. There are some really successful people. I mean, I see people in the room, a lot of them are my clients, but there are some really successful people in the room. Eli's a great client of ours, said he wants to come meet people. This guy's doing deals. So, you know, there are successful people in the room. I say, you gotta come to the meeting. He's like, I'll be there. I'm like, no, you won't. You're here, thank you. Witness, right? I was telling him. I said, he's not showing up. He's, I didn't believe it. I didn't believe it. Because I probably invited him pre-COVID and he didn't come. But he said, I'm coming tonight. So, you know, he's here. And then the one mistake a lot of people make is when is it okay to ask for business? Right? So you need to really learn that it's not about what do you do and how do we do business together. It's just, let's build a relationship. And if there's a mutual beneficial relationship, we can then take our business to the next level. I'll use Ron as an example. Ron, you heard from A to Z Capital. He's one of our hard money lenders. We never did business probably two years ago, two and a half years ago. We didn't do business together. And then someone who worked for me, my general manager, made an introduction to him. And we just sat down and he's like, we were just talking. Just a conversation. It had nothing to do with title. It had to do all about business. Nothing to do with title, all about business and success and strategies and and now today we do, I don't know how much of his business, I'm sure he has other relationships, but we do quite a bit of business together, all from meeting him, getting to know him, getting to like him, getting to trust him, and now we do tons of business together. So that's what I'm talking about at a much deeper level. You focus on that relationship, and if you don't build that relationship, the rest goes in the garbage. You're just going to constantly be on the hunt. Mentor is a big one for me. A lot of you are mentored by Lex, so mentor is a big one for me. I've hired lots of mentors. Um, many, many years ago when I went broke, I gave my last $5,000 to a gentleman by the name of Bob Berg. Anyone know Bob Berg? I know a few of you know Bob. So Bob's a great guy, lives up in Jupiter. He's the author of a book called The Go-Giver. I gave him my last $5,000 and it changed my life. He had a program called Endless Referrals, taught me how to build a referral network. And what I did is I took his program, I was his number one student, and I simply took his program and taught realtors his program. That was it. But his program was really become a certified go-giver coach and sell his product to people, sell coaching and all that. I just said, I want to learn your system and I want to tell realtors how they can build endless referrals. And that's what I did to build a business. So you need to find the right mentor. Do you want a real estate mentor like Lex if you're in real estate? Probably, right? You want someone who's successful, someone who's doing it. But what else do you want? Maybe an accountability mentor, right? Someone who's going to teach you to be accountable, maybe in the gym, maybe in your business, maybe financial, maybe relationship. So you want to really have both. You want to try and find. So I follow a few people. One is Gary V because he's just a marketing cuckoo bird. Like, I mean, did anyone follow Gary? Gary is just like marketing, marketing. Mar so I follow him. I follow Tony Robbins. Obviously, he's great because from the personal development and then one I'll talk about in a few minutes. Do you want a personal or professional mentor? We said, right, you want to probably have both. You want to look for both. And we're not talking something that is going to cost you $50,000 a year. We're talking just find a mentor that's going to give you ideas, insight, hold you accountable in what you're looking to accomplish. 
A big thing that I built, for those of you that were at the event with Lex, I think just before COVID, we, we um, presented Lex and, and a couple of others we had up here. It was what I called my original board of directors. They didn't even know that's what it was, but it was five people. So Cindy is one on the right there, you see Cindy. So she's the owner of a um, very large real estate firm called Charles Ruttenberg Realty. I don't know if you've heard of them. They have these purple signs all over town. So when I joined this networking organization called BNI, Someone said, hey, you need to meet my friend, Cindy. I'm like, okay. And I'm shy. I'm 26 years old. I knew nothing about business, nothing about success. And he said, you just need to meet her. And I was totally scared to meet her. I was like hiding behind a table like this. I was so scared she came over. She owns the largest real estate brokerage, I think, in, in South Florida. She has about 1,000 agents now in one single office. So what do you think that would do for a title company? Did I think I was going to get it? Maybe. No, no, not at all. I didn't even think. I was totally scared. I'm like, who is, I'm going to meet this lady. What am I going to say to her? The successful person owns this huge brokerage. I'm telling you, I was scared. But I met her, built a relationship with her. And how long do you think it takes? Five years. Five years. It took two years until I got the phone call to say, would you like to move into my office? Now, as a title company to move into a real estate office, is a gold mine. It's like winning the lottery. So I share with you this because when people want to know, like, where's your success from? That's a big portion of it. Building a relationship, learning, first of all, how to network, then learning how to build a relationship, then learning how to build a business. 18 years later, I'm still inside the office. She's been through four, or five, I think, five mortgage brokers, a bunch of insurance companies, but I'm still there because I implement these strategies so when you're in this business, I want you to figure out who can send you more deals. So I tell people like, I don't want one deal. I want the client that's going to send me 10 deals a month, not 10 clients that are going to send me one deal a month. So you want to find a strategy on who is that going to be that's going to send you these large amounts of business. And only you know in your business who that may be right? Depending on what your business is. Like Eli has a great source of business, right? One client that sends you, how much of, of that is your business? 90%. 90% of his business from one client, right? Now, is that a problem in business? It's a problem. So we were just talking about um, my logo has changed a couple of times, but we talked about my logo when I first moved into Charles Ruttenberg. I changed my colors to match their logo because they were 90, 95% of my business. But I learned really quickly that that's pretty bad too to just rely on that, right? So now they're only about 20% of our business overall, but still a large portion. So you need to figure out how do I find these relationships? Who are they gonna be? How do I build that relationship? Um, I was working with a friend of mine who, who does commercial um, uh, relocation, so like office furniture moving. I said, well, you need to meet an owner of a business brokerage. And I told him who it was and he's like, all right, can you make an introduction? I'm like, no, I'm gonna buy you a book. It was the go-giver. And I said, take this book over to him, hand deliver it to him and just start building a relationship with him. Maybe send him an email message, maybe send him a newsletter. It could take you two years, three years, five years, but one day you're gonna get the phone call that that's gonna be your biggest client ever. So the board of directors concept is going to be people like Lex. We did this artwork. Um, it was like a, it was a, an artwork poster that had all of these people sitting around the table. So it was my five mentors as I was growing up in this business. And Lex was obviously one of them. We were very close. David was another one. Cindy was another one. Um, so you need to figure out who are your five closest people in business that you can network with. It amazes me when we go to this executive mastermind. These guys are all friends for years, right? Some of you guys, you hang out all the time, like they bounce ideas off each other and strategies off each other. When, if you're sick, hurt, got a problem, lost some business, you pick up the phone and these are your people. How many of you have that in your business? So only about four or five of you. So that's something I think you need to implement. You need to figure out who are your five closest people that you can build a network with. And then you need to share your knowledge. Right? So I authored a book. That's how I shared my knowledge to be able to educate people. I do um, YouTube videos. I have a very successful YouTube channel that talks about all real estate investing. 
But that's what I've done in order to share my knowledge with people. And then people just call us because, hey, I saw your video. Hey, I read your book. Hey, you said something that, that sunk in with me and I wanted to expand more on that with you. Before we even talk about what? Business. business. Very rare am I talking to people about business. What I do, how can we do business together? People tell me all the time, hey, I want to introduce you to this realtor I know. I'm not interested. I'm not interested because I know where that conversation goes. Hey, how are you? Oh, you're inside this office. Oh, you have an in-house title company. Oh, great. Yeah, I don't really like using them, but, but I use them because they kind of make me. And where does that conversation go? So I strategically pick who my people are that I'm going to speak to, and I build these relationships with them. Most of them are investors. They could be investment firms, mortgage companies, real estate companies. You have to pick what works for you. I know just the, the, the one realtor event isn't for me. I don't go to realtor events. It's just not for me. It's not my marketing. There are title companies that will go, and they go every single month. They're there at all these events. It's not for me. I know what works for me. I know my strategy, and I know how to get there. So does anyone know who this is? Oh, his name's there. PBD. So PBD. That's how I met Carlos. He saw my video with PBD. Um, so PBD, his name's Patrick Bed David. Does anyone follow Valuetainment? So a couple of you. So um, I've been following Patrick since 2018. I was going to go to his first vault conference, which was in Texas. Um, but I was leaving on a cruise that Sunday. So my wife's like, you're not going and flying back late Saturday night and then getting on a cruise for seven days. Um, so unfortunately, I couldn't go. But I could just kept following this guy. And then when COVID hit, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to get this guy on my podcast. And I'm thinking like, this guy's got 3 million followers on YouTube. He's worth $118 million. There's no way this guy's getting on my podcast. And if you call, because I called three people that I called. Patrick, Grant Cardone, and Gary V. Gary V never even answered me. Grant Cardone was going to do it and then canceled last minute. Patrick did it. And can anyone guess why? I made it about him. That's it. Real simple. How this guy with 3 million followers on YouTube got on my call. Because I just made it about him. He had a, a new book coming out called Your Next Five Moves. You can write that book down if, if you've never read it. It's a great read, Your Next Five Moves. It was coming out. I read him. I said, how many copies do I need to buy of your book in order to give to my network to have you on my podcast? He gave me a number. I bought the book, sent him the invoice, and he got on my podcast. It's a great video for you to watch. But more importantly, for those of you that may not know, go figure how it worked out this way. About six months ago, he moved to Boca. He moved to Boca. Imagine that, right? This guy I've been following all this time. I'm in his office all the time. Like literally this guy, I'm in. Now, do I get to see him? No, it doesn't work that way. You don't get to walk in the office and say, a lot of times he's there and you don't even get to see him. But I'm in the office. I'm friends with the people that work for him, his salespeople. I'm in there all the time listening, listening to the strategies. His salespeople are over at my house. And now he just bought an office building literally eight minutes from our office. He just closed last week on an office building. So. Pick your mentor wisely. Pick someone who's going to add value in your business. Follow them, get to know them, get to build a relationship with them, attend their events, support their events. These two guys didn't want to come out to a real estate meeting. They came out to support me because we have a professional relationship. That's what it's about. So let's talk about a, a stormy season for your business. So I told you what happened, right? My business, the market in 2000, what was the crash? Um, 2007, 6, 7, 8, right? We went from literally a lot of deals to no deals. As Lex said, my office was right here. I rented an office space with uh, a very large mortgage company. He had about three quarters of the space. I had about maybe 15% of the space and there was an attorney that had 10% some reason the market was booming. We all signed a personal guarantee on this lease. We put in marble floors, all this stuff. It was 500 Fairway Drive Suite 107, 108, I think 106, 107, 108. Marble floor, like everything we did. Personally guaranteed, no matter what my mother told me, she said, don't sign the lease. I signed the lease personally. This mortgage company went out and I'm like, I don't do business that way. I don't just walk. That's not how I do business. So I went to the landlord, like, I'll pay you whatever I can do. Let me stay here. He let me stay. The mortgage company disappeared. 
And then eventually I got the call to move into Charles Ruttenberg. I was broke, I had no money, but I had my relationships. So it was very painful because I lost everything. How many of you have ever lost everything? With nowhere to turn. I didn't have rich parents. I didn't have investment accounts. I liquidated my 401k to buy my first house. I literally had nothing. I was going to, to Bank of America and um, it was Bank of America and SunTrust on Hillsborough. You go this way, it was Bank of America and SunTrust. I was going there writing cash advances on my credit card. That's how I paid payroll. I would give my assistant, she tells people all the time, I'd give my assistant a cash advance and said, just cash it, it's good. We'll make up for it on the next deal. But that next deal never came. That next deal never came. Next deal never... So you need to plan for a stormy season, right? So now we're at an all time high in real estate, right? How many are making more money than they've ever made? Okay, so about 25% of you. So what are you gonna do when the market crashes? Maybe, right? If you're a real estate investor, possibly you, you are going to, but not everyone here is, some people are realtors. They're not gonna make that kind of money unless they're focusing on, on you know, REO brokers and, and short sales. So you need to figure out like, what are you gonna do when the market crashes, right? How's your business if there's no hurricanes? Probably not as good as it would be if a hurricane season came, right? Hurricane season, you're never gonna get a hold of this guy. It's funny, in BNI, because it's one person per profession, it's amazing how when there's hurricane season, the insurance adjuster usually leaves the chapter because they're just so busy. And then once hurricane season passes, they wind up coming back. And I've seen this over time. So the question is, how are you going to recession-proof your business, right? Most importantly is, what does it look like before the storm? Most people don't think about it, right? Did I think about it? I was like, this is great, we're printing money. And it turned off like this. So the question is, what does it look like now if you're thriving? Where does your business come from? How much business in it? Uh, you know, how much business are you getting? Where does your business come from? What's your gross receipts? What's your net profit? You need to really understand your business, where it comes from, so then you can scale it when the crash comes. So like when the crash comes and I'm like, if I get, okay, 15% of my business from Lex, now I need to know, I need to find another Lex. Now, thank God he's successful at, at mentoring students. So Lex now becomes 15 of him or 20 of him for his students that come to us. But what does that look like in your business? If you're a real estate agent, if you're a lender, if you're a coach, if you're a recruiter, if you're an insurance adjuster, what does it look like in your business now not figure it out when the crash comes. So people always tell me, they're like, why don't you take your business to 200 deals? I'm like, that's not my goal. Why don't you invest in this? I don't want to, that's not my goal. So I hold a real estate broker's license, I have an insurance license, I owned a home and auto insurance company. People are like, that's great, you should just sell insurance to all of your closings. I'm like, yes, in a perfect world, but I focus on what works for me. So you need to focus in your business on a realistic goal that gives you the success you want. Don't set unrealistic goals. Now, how far out should your goals be? Who sets goals in their business? So you set goals what? You typically there quarterly? quarterly? three years, scale it. Monthly, we have monthly goals in our office, right? Monthly goals, quarterly goals, annual goals. I have daily goals. Oh, no, no, you really don't want daily goals. Some people do though. Like with me, eating is bad for me. Like I eat like crap, so I have daily goals. Like let me just get through one more day of eating healthy. So you could, but in business, it's gonna be monthly probably, quarterly, annually. More important though, I have always found success in the three and the five year number. What does it look like in year three and year five? So I created a goal many, many years ago, and a lot of the wholesalers can, can probably relate to this. It was, I wanted to do five closings per month for the year. That was my goal every year. So year one, if I did 25 closings, year two, I wanted to do 30 closings. Year three, 35 closings. 
And I'll never forget, I sat down with Cindy, who's the owner of Charles Rutenberg, I told you, and I was doing about 30 deals. And she's like, we need to double your business. I'm like, I don't want to. She's like, then you're not for me. I'm like, what do you mean? It's my business. Why are you worried about my business? That's what real mentors do. They have these hard conversations. And fast forward, 70, 80, 90 closings. There were times we were doing 100, 125 closings in a given month. So it's about setting realistic goals. And if you crush your goals that month, congratulations. Don't get cocky, get back to your goal. Because that's what a lot of people do. Oh, I made 100 grand this month, but my goal was only 50. And now next month you take off. I see them on social media. Now they're on vacation for a month. Don't do it. Stick to your goals. The crash is coming. In every business, the economy, it's coming at some point. Did I think it was going to come a while ago? Yes, it didn't. Maybe two more years we'll get, maybe not. I don't know, but when it comes, you need to be prepared. Limit the extent of your borrowed money. So you're gonna learn a big strategy of mine if you read the book is zero debt. Because of the pain and suffering I was in, I was just in nothing but debt. Borrowing from everybody I could borrow. Buying a house with 100, and I think then it was 106% financing. Interest only loans, a 228 loan with a 20, like, I think it was like a, a 80% first, a 20%, so like it was just people borrowing money like it was crazy in this business. So limit the extent of your debt. Don't go buy the fancy car just because you can. Have a strategy for when it's going to crash and know what that's gonna look like. That's just my advice. You don't have to listen to me, you can do what you wanna do, but if you wanna learn how to plan for a stormy day, these are my tips because I went through it. How fast can the storm roll in? Well, we just said, it literally happened overnight in the crash. Literally overnight, I went from 30 deals to three deals. So do the percentage of drop and never recovered. Then it was like seven deals, five deals, two deals, three deals, five. Never got back up to 30 for years. Be careful signing for large office spaces. Well, that's what I said, right? Money's never going to stop rolling in. And sure enough, it did. And then this guy here, he did the same thing and he lost the entire complex. It's fully renovated now. And now there's a big hotel back there now, all these big warehouses. That was all like the golf course. And this guy owned, I don't know how many buildings, but a lot. So you just need to plan. Build cash reserves and wait it out. So a lot of my investor friends are starting to build now cash, put it in something lower interest rate and just stockpile, stockpile, stockpile waiting for the crash so you have something to fall back on. My plan is to teach you how when the crash comes in two years, you survive it. Some of you will thrive it. How many of you think you'll thrive a crash? Right, these investors, right? Wholesaling deals, you're gonna thrive it. Great, but not everyone is. But maybe your time not to thrive is when the market is at the peak because it's harder to find deals. Wholesalers always find a way. But not every business is able to do that. Not every business can do that. So you need to figure out, build these cash reserves. I'm not saying you need to have, you know, 500 grand sitting in the bank, but build enough to be able to survive a two year storm. Know what your expenses are to survive a two year storm. Have it somewhere safe. And to create a budget. How many of you have a budget in your business? Right, some people have a budget. I know when COVID hit, it was the perfect thing that we had a budget because I literally opened up the Excel spreadsheet and I sat with my wife and I said, COVID hit. So I think the month before COVID, I think we did 84 deals maybe or something. Then the month when COVID really hit, 34 deals. Now we need 70 to break even. 70 deals to break even. So we did 34 deals, so imagine. So what did we do? We opened up our spreadsheet, boom, 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 boom. What are we turning off? Facebook ads, off. Google ads, off. YouTube ads, off. All these wasted nonsense expenses that we, when business is great, we're doing it, trying to build this, but then you turn them off. So you need to have a written budget. Everything needs to be written. So if you don't have a budget, you should. So who's financially free in this room? One, only one person, financially free. What is financially free? How do you define it? No debt, maybe? You have enough to cover nine months. No worry. No worry, right? You have enough money coming in without having to work. 
in order to cover your expenses. So if you didn't go to work tomorrow, you'd be okay. It takes a long time to build that. I can tell you if my title company shut down tomorrow, I'd be just fine. We have enough invested that we're fine. We'll live, we'll be okay. Would we have to shut our office? Employees would go out of bit. Yes, absolutely. But to be truly financially free should be your goal. To come up where you have enough invested to where you can cash in and live. So someone that's buying uh, investment properties, you wanna make sure you have enough money rolling in in rents than rolling out in expenses. So you wanna be financially free. And I know two or three people in the room that I know personally that are working there. They're buying properties, building their network, building their net worth. So you wanna be financially free. Financial freedom funnels. That's one thing that I tell people about. What are your funnels to be financially free? How many of you are only invested in one thing? One thing, what is it, real estate? How many are you, roughly, do you have invested in multiple? Three? Couple of things you're invested in? The really successful people have money in other places. We were sitting having dinner just before and, and Carlos here was telling me, he says, how come real estate people, they don't invest in this, or you said it, real, real estate people don't invest in the stock market. I said, I don't know. The real successful ones that I know have money in the stock market. Maybe not a lot, they put more in what they know. So like I have more in commercial real estate than I do in the stock market, but I have in the stock market as well. So you need to come up with what are your financial funnels that are gonna generate your success. So for an investor, it could be wholesaling, but maybe you're gonna find a way to buy one rental. Maybe you're gonna find a way next year to buy two rentals. So you need to have a strategy because wholesaling is not gonna make you financially free. You're always on the hunt. Now, unless you build a huge, massive wholesaling business, but even then, you're gonna constantly be in that game. So to be financially free, you're gonna to have to figure out where is that money gonna come from? So that's a big strategy for people that's very, very hard to figure out. But you need to know in your business, what is it? Maybe you're gonna buy, Andy does Airbnbs, right? So he's gonna know his strategy, how many he's gonna buy and what the return on investment's gonna be and what his net worth is gonna be. Here's a guy, a lot of deals you have. Does anyone follow Andy on Instagram or, or I think Instagram? This guy's like, the, the shit he buys. The shit he buys. I mean, I love the picture in the pool, the one in that pool. What? I mean, this guy buys the dirtiest property and flips it into something that you're like, I'd wanna go stay there on vacation. Beautiful. Follow people like that. Learn. What is it? What's the handle? It's Andy Santoni. His, it'll, it's his name. I could share it with you. But I mean, you see the stuff he's doing. Like here's a guy, motivational, inspirational. Do, how old are you? 32. So I don't know how many doors he has, but he has a lot. Follow him and his shit's real. And that's what I, what I like. Like some of these people I watch online and I'm like, are they real? Like, is that legit? Or I see some of these people will come to some of the meetings and it's like, I make a million dollars a month. No, you don't. So you need to really know who you're working with and follow them and figure out what are they investing in that's working. What are they doing that's working? Maybe you invest in businesses, maybe hard money lending, maybe commercial real estate, residential real estate. You need to figure out what works for you. I'm a big fan of having a home without a loan. Not many people I know do. I think it's one of, it was one of my goals when the crash happened to say, I'll never do it again. So I figured out how to do it. I'll never do it again. So if you can find out, now I'm talking the home you live in, not investment properties where you're gonna get a loan, create a return on investment, absolutely. You wanna leverage your real estate, it's fine. I'm talking the home you live in. I don't know if any of you know the feeling of losing everything but if you own a house without a mortgage and you can't make your payments, you're gonna be able to stay. So our office building where we're at, I've always told people, I'll go down to one employee. I own our office building cash. I'll pay my HOA dues, $500 a month. My taxes at the end of the year, 
I'll be okay. We'll survive the storm. That's my strategy, may not be your strategy, but the ones that I know that are leveraged, what happened in the crash? Lose it. So what's gonna happen in the next crash? They're gonna lose it. So just be careful how much you leverage and just do it wisely. <clears throat> car payments are big. Do you lease or own a car? Everyone has their own strategy. Again, I'm a big fan of owning my car with no payment. I don't wanna have to owe anybody any money because when the crash comes, Guess what shows up next? The tow truck. The tow truck. Ask me how I know. My 5 Series BMW. Ask me how I know. So try not to do it. You see all these people online, the planes and the cars, and try not to do it. Try not to do it. College planning, again, is very, very important. I, I encourage people, if you have kids, how many people have kids here? Florida prepaid is huge. I encourage you to do it now. How do I know you'll be thankful later you did it? Because my daughter's 18, just got accepted to seven colleges, waiting for two more, and college is paid for. Paid for since the day she was born. I did the Florida prepaid and a 529. Set it, forget it, you're done. That was the one thing I never cashed in on. So again, IRAs, 401ks, Life insurance, advanced types of life insurance. I forget what it's called. I'm working on, on something now. What is it called? Universal, Universal life. life. Um, but look into it. Look into these advanced strategies if you have cash to put away that's going to plan for the future. The future. Rainy day. And then what's your next saving vehicle? What is it going to look like? What are you going to look to achieve in order to put your money in? What are you saving for? Are you saving to buy a duplex? Are you saving to buy another Airbnb? Are you saving to lend another hard money loan? What are you looking in your business or in your personal life to invest in? What is your next vehicle? So we talked about the financial freedom funnels. What's your next funnel? What are you saving for? What is next that you're gonna put your money in? That you're gonna maybe take 5% of every deal, put it away to now say, now I can go do a hard money loan. Now I'm gonna go buy a rental property because I have the down payment. I'm going to do a fix and flip. It's not going to be when I have all the money. Those days don't come. You're going to start, I just have enough to get in the first deal. Right? It's not going to happen that all of a sudden, you know, unless you have a trust fund, it's not going to be like, well, I, I have 100 grand, I can just start buying properties. It's going to be, I have 10 grand, I'm going to borrow 90 grand and I'm going to buy my first fix and flip. And you're going to go to someone like Lex and he'll partner with you and, and, and help you out. So what is your next vehicle for financial freedom? How many people have a business, not wholesaler, like you have a, a, a business business, like a product or service to somebody? A couple of people I know these guys do. So how are you different than your competitors? So we talked about the why, right? When we talked about the circles, we talked about why. Why are you different? Why are you different than your competitors? I pick on people in the room, but like Ron, why are you different than all the other hard money lenders that show up at the meetings? Because I do everything and my hard money loan turns into another loan because nobody wants to pay a high interest hard money loan forever. So when they're ready to get out, I'm standing there and I got the product for them to get them out of the high interest. Right? That's pretty good. So he has a why. He has something that his competitors don't do. How many hard money lenders do you know that do conventional loans as well? Not many. How many title companies do you know will have your back no matter what, no matter what happens? They will fight for you. Not many, I can tell you. I know a lot of them. Not many. Do mistakes happen? Absolutely, we're all human. But who's gonna have your back and who's gonna fight till the very end? When an investor emailed today and said, Kevin, get on this right now, I spent half my day dealing with it. So you need to know in your business what sets you apart. What sets you apart from your competition? A lot of things. What's the number one thing? Video resumes. Video resumes, absolutely. You know, it was great every time he sent me somebody. All I had to do is just look at a, a one or two minute Zoom interview. I didn't have to meet with them and waste my time. Very important, he does all the work. 
So he's got great strategy. So you need to know in your business what your competition. So when I got into Charles Ruttenberg, it was because a program I took called Referral Marketing Mastery and BNI told me meet with your competitor and find out what they do well. But in exchange, when you meet with them, and I did, I called, her name was Maria Elena, she owned a title company, she was inside Charles Ruttenberg Realty. We went for coffee in Boynton Beach on Gateway Boulevard, and I met with her, and I found out what she did really well. And I just started duplicating what she does well, but I did even better what she doesn't do well. Right, what she sucked at. And then two years later, I got the call to move into the office because they kicked her out. They did a survey. She was failing in what she did, and I got the opportunity to move in. So meet with your competitors. It's okay. You're not putting them out of business. There's enough room for everybody. But just find out what they don't do well and do it. Right? Know what they stink at and just start doing it in every business. We talked about this. Do you take time to build relationships? It could take, like in my case, two years it took. This isn't overnight. This isn't I'm going to get a deal in a month from now. It may take a year to get that huge deal. Marco works a lot with law firms. Maybe his head just has to find the owner of a law firm. He gets to know them. They, they go to the tower club. He starts meeting them. Maybe a year later he gets a deal. This guy's networked like you wouldn't believe. That's the point. He's building these relationships that then the phone calls just keep coming in one after the other. Be memorable. Ask engaging questions. What sets you apart from your competition? What do you do? Why do you do what you do? What impact does it have on your community? Right? So you want to find out, like, what sets you apart? Tell me, what makes you memorable? What are people going to remember if I introduce you? Because I want to be able to brag about you. Just like I can say I know several people in the room, I can brag about you. What do most people do? Me focused. They talk about themselves. Most people when they're networking, let me tell you what I do. Let me tell you what product or service I offer. Let me tell you how this could work for you. Instead of, I don't really care what I do. Tell me about you. Tell me about your family. Tell me about what you do. Tell me about the impact that it has on others. That's how you build these relationships. How many of you interview clients? A couple of people. What do you mean by that? So you want to interview your clients. So who are you going to work with and see if it's a good fit? Real estate's great in this because most realtors take what? Anything. Right? I mean, I help coach a thousand agents at, at the real estate company, so I see it. Some of them will take anything. I'll take a rental, I'll take a purchase, I'll take a short sale, I'll take a foreclosure, I'll take a buyer, a seller, a relocation. They don't care. But you know what the real successful agents do? I'm a waterfront luxury expert. I'm an Airbnb expert. You think Andy could flip regular homes? Absolutely. But this guy's crushing it at Airbnbs. You guys are focused on wholesaling. 24 deals in one year? Congratulations. Most wholesalers don't even do one. So you've done 24 in your first year. Unheard of. Unheard of, right? Unheard of. So you need to interview the people you're working with to make sure it's a good fit before you spin your wheels and waste your time. Now, obviously, wholesaling is it's a little bit different. You're not going to go necessarily to the foreclosed owner and say, is it a good fit for me to work with you? Yours is an emotional-based message. I'm solving your problem. Right? You're in foreclosure, you need some money, uh, you know, probate has to be open, you can't afford an attorney so you can't get out of your house, well I'll pay for the attorney for you. You know, you're solving a problem more than interviewing. But some businesses need to interview to know if it's a good fit, as opposed to just taking anyone. Insurance adjuster, think he's going to take every claim? Some he knows it's just going to be a headache. Not, maybe not worth it. So you want to interview your clients and say, who are you? What are you looking to get out of it? What are your goals out of this? What's your expectations? Selling an experience is like what I, I was just telling you. You want to sell an experience to them. What is it going to look like for me to solve your problem? Ease and convenience. Ease and convenience. Freedom of stress. 
right? There's an emotional based message there. So you need to find out, you know, what do you, you know, as a realtor, what experience I talk about in the book as a realtor selling to the family. And, and this was, was really more, this, this section was really geared more towards real estate agents because I try to teach real estate agents to interview your client that's looking to buy and find out what they really want. Like you want a pool for your kids, but I'm showing you a house without a pool because I think it's right for you. No, you think it's an easier commission for you. But how about what they want? How about selling an experience of people picturing their kids riding in a cul-de-sac because it's safe from cars? Or picturing the kids running home. The bus stop is right here. You have to find out like what's important to them and start selling them on what's important to them, not what's important to you, your pocket, your wallet. So find out what's important to clients and solve their problems. And then become an educator, not a seller. Try not to sell anything. Educate them. Realtors, investors, recruiters, public adjust, educate people. Public insurance adjusters educate on their policy and what their exposure is and what a claim would look like. Make sure you have the right coverage. Now is the time for insurance adjusters to build their client base and say, let me review your coverage now because I'm going to get your claim later. Right? It's not if, it's when. I'm going to get your claim later. So the question comes down to, he does that now. He does all the homework now to build it later. Realtors will do the same thing. Realtors definitely want to do that. Interview your clients and educate them on the house. How many of you learn, how many realtors are in the room? How many of you get to know the schools before you show the house? Not as many that are realtors. Why wouldn't you? Where's the closest Publix? Where's the closest Walmart? Where are the schools? What type of schools? What are they rated for? What's the water company? What's the cable company? The electric company? Know all of this stuff and start educating your clients. Do you think they're going to buy from you once you do all that homework? They're not going anywhere else. They will buy from you time and time again. How to become a master at what you do. So why would you want to become a master? Because you're the best at what you do. Because you're the best at what you do? Okay. Why else? People trust professionals. People trust professionals. Your competition won't do it. That's plain and simple. Your competition won't do it. So if Lex puts on a boot camp, Many of you have been to the boot camps, but if you go into a boot camp, we're not going to talk now with, with successful students, but new people that walk in the room, they go through a three-day boot camp. How many actually do deals? How many walk out of there and never touch the course again? Right? They just put courses on their bookshelf. Sounds good, but they never do anything. Then maybe three or four actually do something on Monday morning. Then by Wednesday, one. But then why is there someone like Andy who's doing tons of deals? Are you guys 24 deals in one year? Because the others won't do it. That's the bottom line. So you become a master of what you do because the others will never even catch up. So I'm not concerned about any of my competition. I'm friends with my competitors. There's lots of title companies that are investor friendly. I'm friendly with the owners. We text. We see each other at events. They don't do what I do. I'll run circles around them till midnight. They won't catch up. And that's what sets me apart from my competition. And it's okay. They don't have to do that, but I will. So you become a master of what you do. How do you become a master? You educate yourself. We talked about it. You want to educate yourself on what you do, why you do it, how to do it, what product, what service you deliver, and just educate people. And then they're going to want to use you. I work out with a fitness trainer, a United States Marine, uh, for the last, four, I think, four years now, right? I'm in year four now. We just started year four. And people always ask me, like, why do you go there? I'm like, well, not because it's expensive, because he's the best at what he does. He eats right. He exercises. He thinks right. He's in the best shape. He's a master at fitness. That's who I want to get trained by. I don't want to go to a gym where they bring in a bunch of kids that are doing it because they get free membership or they took an overnight how to be a fitness trainer course. I want to be with the guy that's whatever, 50 plus years old and is in the best shape of his life. 
He's a master at what he does. So I'll pay him whatever he wants. What's your education or skill set? So realtors, you get advanced training. They talk about it. You go get all of these, um, what do they call them? Uh, certifications after your name, right? So whatever business you're in, you want to find out like what is that in your business? What certification can you get? What skill set can you get? So for me as a title company, having a real estate broker's license gives me the ability to sit with an agent and talk their business, talk contracts with them, talk understanding how to fill in the right blanks so you don't set yourself up for failure. Most title companies can't do that because they don't know that side of the business. So educate yourself in what you do so you can just be an educator. Educate, build your skill set, teach people, and the business, I'm telling you, they will, they will use you forever. What is your reputation in the industry? So if I Googled you, what would it say? Now, I know you can't believe everything on Google, but I Google everybody. What's your reputation? What do people see you as when they follow you on social media? Right? There are people who come to me and say, ah, I had to unfriend you on Facebook. I'm like, I don't care. There are those people that come to me and say, you know what? Your motivational message the other day, and I swear to you, I've had a wife come over to me and said it saved my husband's life. He was going to commit suicide that day. And because he read your post, he decided not to do it. In every event I go to, she hugs me. That's the impact you need to have on people. We know who he is. He comes in the office every couple of days. So the question is, what are you going to do to be different to leave a lasting impact on people? We talked about the emotional-based message to sell. Again, you need to sell on the emotion. So for a wholesaler, you're going to be selling on, you're not going to lose your house. You're not going to live in this mold-infested house. We're going to fix it. You're not going to be foreclosed on and have blemishes on your credit. Flip the side, executive recruiter, he's going to sell on what? I'm going to get you a great candidate. It's going to cost you less than most recruiters, and I'm going to make it easy for you. I'm going to do all the work, get it on video, and boom. So you need to figure out in your business what is that going to be and sell a motion. Don't sell a product. So realtors, don't sell the house. Sell the emotion of the family living in the house. You'll win every time. And then always look at the end result. So that's where I talk about for the realtors, investors, anyone. What is the end result? Can you think of the end result in your business? What does it look like? That's what you're selling, the end result. Imagine being financially free or, or getting out of your house and, and having all this debt, getting this foreclosure out. And you know what? Not only, Mrs. Jones, I'm going to buy your house cash for you. I'm going to pay your loan off. I'm going to let you stay in the house three months rent free or low rent. But you know what? Most important, I'm going to fix your credit. You're going to what? Think about that. When you find this person, how much does credit repair cost? Not much. What if you can help coach people on teaching them how to repair their credit? Because you know their credit stinks because obviously they're in foreclosure. There's an emotional side to it. Who else is doing that? Now, if you're a wholesaler, don't start doing that. Let them do it. <laughs> but think about the emotional side to it. What is the emotional side? What are you selling that emotion to them? And make them feel like you're going to solve their problem, you're going to help them out, and, and you're family, you're part of them. Did anyone see the story on NBC where we saved the lady's house? Um, she was a wire fraud scam. So she got scammed. Her name was Patricia. We were up on uh, NBC and Fox News in New York. Uh, she lost her uh, deposit. So the title company emailed her. It was a fake email, wire her deposit. She wired $86,000 out to a fake title company. Her entire life savings, she worked three jobs. Two kids, divorced, lived in a, in a two bedroom apartment. $86,000, couldn't get it back. I didn't do the closing, by the way, full disclosure. But someone sent her to me through Facebook saying, Kevin, can you help? Let me see. I helped her. I set up a GoFundMe. We reported the title company and the real estate brokerage to the state of Florida. We raised $36,000 on GoFundMe. We fought with the government to get the 
um, through the FBI and the state attorney to get back half of the money. So she got back half. We raised the other half on GoFundMe. We did the closing of that same house. We had the seller wait. We wound up doing the closing. Then I took her over to City Furniture and they furnished the entire condo for her. Emotional based message, right? You just wanna solve a problem. That's gonna be the change in your business from going from 24 deals to maybe 50 deals because you have a plan to do something that someone else doesn't do. And the realtor is the same thing. When you can sell what you do, that I'm gonna educate you on the school system and the rating of the school, where the schools are and the benefit to your kids. Tell me another realtor that does that. Doesn't exist. Doesn't exist. And know who your competition are. Know what they do. You know how many realtors there are? How many investors there are? How many recruiters and insurance adjusters? What sets you apart from your competition and why would I refer business to you? That's what you need to know to tell people. Mine's plain and simple. I was a firefighter, moved down from New York 20 days before 9-11. I go in the deal together and I promise I'll leave the deal together with you. I'll have your back, I'll fight for you, and when there's a problem, I'm gonna solve it. If it can be solved, I'll solve it. Plain and simple, that's why you wanna use me. Not because I do good title insurance, I have a good close. Plain and simple, when the problem happens, I will solve your problem for you. I will fight for you. So what does your competition do? And figure it out. So successful business plan. So I always bring this and I share. So this is my first business plan. My logo doesn't even look the same. You'll see the logo is totally different. This was from 2008. But you have to have a plan, right? You need to have a plan, but not only a plan, but what kind of plan? A written plan. Who has a written plan for their business for 2022? Honestly, one, two, three, four, four of you. Why? Why do you not have a plan, right? Come up with a plan. Now what's included in your plan? So you need a plan because you need something to follow, right? That's what a plan is. It's a plan to follow for success, to measure results, to make sure they're measurable, achievable. Having it written down is very, very important. What's your mission statement? Do, do you have a mission statement? No, we don't. Start thinking of what's your mission statement? Why do you do what you do? What's your mission statement? Because what happens is when you write your mission statement down, and you believe in it, endless opportunity happens. I go back to the BNI organization. There's 10,000 members. I've been to directors conferences all over the country. And there's always one question I always ask. And there are people who have been in BNI for a long time. What's the mission of the organization? Do you know executive directors, which are franchise owners, basically own the region? have no idea what their own mission statement is. But if you look at my stats in BNI, I've generated over a million dollars in business for other people. I'm usually number one in my chapter, passing referrals to other people. I generate a lot of referrals. I build a lot of relationships. Do you think it has anything to do with I know the mission by heart? I don't know, maybe, maybe there's something to it. So figure out what is your mission first study it and believe in it. What is your target market? As a realtor, what's your target market? Usually they say anyone buying or selling, right? You go to a networking group and they're like, hey, my name's Mr. Smith and I'm a real estate agent. If you know someone looking to buy or sell, that would be a great referral for me. How many times have you heard that, right? So what's your target market? How about a real estate agent that says, I'm looking to meet the person you know that's relocating from New York due to the pandemic and is looking to buy an oceanfront condo cash. That would be a great referral for me. Do you think someone can connect to that more than just someone buying or selling? So you need to know what is your target market in your business? Narrow it down as much as possible. Study your competition. See, you'll see consistent across a lot of the slides is what? Competition. Ooh, love it. I don't know who that was, but I like it. I want that. Um, so, I'm weird like that with fire stuff. So um, if you think about it in your business, your competition 
if you are truly, now I said, so if I built a seven figure business, that means I'm in what percentage of income? 1%, right? 1% of income. So what happens with the other 99%? They're trying to figure it out. Some will reach it. How many will reach it? Well, clearly, 1%. 1%. So if I ask you to meet your competition, how many of your competitors will be 1%? See, if you start looking at it that way, you change your mental game. Like, I will be the 1%. I'm going to accomplish that. Strategic partners are super, super important. You need to find them like we talked about, Lex, Cindy, some of these uh, other people I have. So who are strategic partners in your business that can refer a lot of business to you? Plain and simple, that's what a strategic partner is. It's not someone who may send you business themselves. So for me, a strategic partner may not be a real estate agent, but a strategic partner may be someone like Lex who is teaching tens of thousands of people across the state is a good strategic partner a win-win relationship. And how do you measure time and budget is also important. How much money are you spending and how much time are you investing in building these relationships? How much money are you putting into Google AdWords? How much money are you putting into executive networking and chamber of commerce and tower club? And then what's the return on investment? And the reason I say that is A, you find out what works and what doesn't work, what you're wasting your money on, but more importantly, you find out what? what you can double down on. So I found out a long time ago when I met Lex that what works for me? Investment clubs. Lex, can you introduce me to who? David. I'm at David's meetings and I do a lot of business with David. Bria down in, in Broward, down in Dade. So I knew that more than real estate agents, investors work really well for me. So I go to all the investor clubs. There are two that I don't go to. Why is that? Competition's there. So my competitors go, one goes to one club, one goes to the other club. And there's a great underlying rule. Don't come in my backyard, I won't go in yours. And it works. They go to theirs, I won't even show up there because I respect them and what they do. I don't want to come in and start doing what I do with these clubs in order to earn the business. I say that confidently because I do it and I build these relationships. So I do it in the clubs that I go to, they go to their clubs. So you need to figure that out in your business. Where are you investing your money? Does Google ads work for you? Maybe, YouTube ads, video marketing. Face-to-face -face networking, chamber of commerce, BNI networking, executive mastermind, elite masterminds. I know Lex is in what, collective genius, right? So it works for him and his business. How much are you gonna spend and what's your return on investment? I went to the vault conference. Patrick, uh, Patrick had a vault conference in September. It was, I was looking, I'm like, oh, the tickets are like $500. I'm like, ah, I don't know, what am I gonna get out of it? I looked at the whole experiences, I met with all of them. I went the top tier tickets. I said I want the most access to him. And I had the most access the entire weekend I was with him. At lunches, at dinners, on the yacht, talking with all of these high level executives. That's what I wanted. So if I couldn't afford it, I wasn't gonna bother doing it. And I went in with a plan. So you need to figure out what works for you. What type of events, how much money are you gonna spend? So we talked about the Board of Directors, which is your dream team. So what are the benefits of a team? Having people with different perspectives. Different perspectives. Accountability. Delegation. Different expertise. Expertise. Delegation. Delegation. So on an executive team, the one I like the most is failure. I like failure the most. I want to learn from your failures so I no longer do it. So when I tell people, they ask me like, why would I give Lex whatever he charges for mentoring? And I say, because you're gonna learn from his failures and not fail. So if you lose that on one deal, was it worth it? Absolutely. So when I was talking with Patrick at, at the uh, vault conference, we were talking about like, how do you make a business eventually sellable? If you give me one tip, how I can position my business so maybe in 10 years I can sell it, was it worth the admission to the event? Absolutely. 
So figure out who your team are. Find out who your team members are. There was a post, I think you shared it or something, the millionaire mentor, millionaire mentor. There was a post talking about like, who do you hang out with? People that are older than you, people that are more successful than you. So I didn't surround myself with peers of mine. I surrounded myself with people that were more successful than me. I was broke, but they didn't know it. I faked it until I made it. I literally faked it and I hung out with people like Lex and David and Cindy, right? So you fake it until even my own wife, I faked it. <laughs> I met her at David's convention, his foreclosure convention. And I was one of the speakers and she was an attendee. Who knew? She was a business coach. I married my business coach and she helped me become successful, but who knew, right? I faked it. I'm telling you, I was down in the dumps. His, his convention was 2010, I was broke. She didn't know it though, and now we're married. So, you know, find out who your team members are and recruit them. <laughs> Maintain these relationships are super important. Meet with them, talk with them, follow up with them. It's not about business, it's about relationships. How are you doing? How can I help you? What are you doing this weekend? How's the family? How are the kids? Anything I can help you with? Anything we can do together? That's how you're gonna build these relationships. Introduce your team members. Well, clearly you can see I have that concept of introducing people, right? Public insurance adjuster, recruiter, lender, Marcelo, our videographer. <laughs> so you wanna learn about other members and introduce your sphere of influence, right? That's how you become what Bob Berg calls me a connector, right? He calls me a connector every time I talk to him. It's because I learn to connect people and then people would just want to surround themselves with people like that. Oh, there, go giver, Bob Berg. Are you a connector? Are you a connector in your business to connect different people? These guys in the executive mastermind are always introducing each other to everybody. Hey, I got a guy for you. Hey, I got this one. This may be good for you. Has nothing to do with them. They've learned the skill set of being a connector and what it means to introduce other people when they have challenges. Disc personality, has anyone ever taken disc? Well, I know Doug, you have, you probably teach it. Disc personality is, is really, really useful in business. If you've never looked it up, just look up disc training, disc personality training, and start understanding the different quadrants of personalities. So when you're presenting and meeting with clients, you understand really quickly what their dominant personality is and know how to focus your sales pitch to them. So some are like me, just tell me the way it is. Like I have people coming, I have one guy who's like always wants to come and he's like, you're a hard guy to get, I just wanna sit and talk to you. I'm like, dude, I don't have time to talk. Just tell me what you want. You're getting all my business, so is there something else you need from me? Because I don't have the time in, in that aspect, right? So you wanna figure out what is their personality and what do they need to feel heard? What do they need to feel like they're part of your team? So the four different personalities real quick is like if they're direct like me, influencers are the ones that are, are lo love to talk. So like Marcelo, the videographer, loves to talk, very emotional. You, then you have ones that are super supportive. And then you have like the CPAs, the guys and, and ladies that, that love to analyze every deal. How many of you investors have worked with people that love to analyze every part of the deal? That's when David Dweck stands up and says, write the damn check already. Just write the check. Stop analyzing, write the check. So if you learn disc personality profiling and start do it on yourself and learn, you're gonna start seeing a transformation in your business, especially real estate agents. When you can learn your clients, your buyers, the husband and the wife, know what they are, what personality, how do they need to be talked to? The reality is a lot of the husbands don't really care as long as the wife's happy. But you have to learn who are they, what's their personality and how do I sell to them? Right? How am I talking to them? Some need the slides. I see some of you taking pictures of the slides. Some are watching me. Some are sleeping. So it just depends what your personality is. And how often do you change your team when they fail you? Right? If you have integrity and you meet and you set good expectations. So in my referral marketing plan, I always talked about what are the expectations for my team? How do I thank them? How do I appreciate them? How often do I meet with them? What do we do together? But if you have that type of relationship where you're building constant relationships with these people, you never have to worry about it. You're not gonna replace your team. Lex, 18 years. David, probably 15 years. Cindy, 18 years. 
So you're gonna start building these relationships that transforms your business. I think I have two more slides. So when you run out of fuel, so how many of you have ever just been exhausted? Right? You're just exhausted. How many of you have been driving in your car and you're like, I have one more mile, no more miles, and then you run out of gas? Anyone ever run out of gas? Right? It's pretty shitty. So you run out of fuel. So what do you do if you ever run out of fuel? You want to focus on recovery, right? But continue. Don't stop. Don't stop. If you have a bad month, don't stop. Business is slow, don't stop. You get sick, don't stop. Keep going, don't stop. You gotta continue charging forward. Recognize the feelings when you get to a low point, right? What does it feel like when you're at a low point, whether it's personally, professionally? I know what it feels like at a low point when I was 300 pounds and I couldn't move on the floor with my son. I have the video, I was like, I couldn't get up. I was like, my knees, I couldn't move transform my life. I dropped almost 100 pounds, had a trainer, eat right. How does it feel in business, personally, professionally, when you get to a low point? Don't stop, but recognize it. Recognize what it looks like when you guys are at that low point. Are you guys all partners? Yes. So when you're all partners, how does it feel when one of you are out of integrity? It'll happen. Now you guys are young, so you may not experience it now, but I had four partners in my first title company. Now I have just me. Why? Because they were out of integrity when the crash happened and I learned real quickly who had my back and who didn't. Out of the four, I still talked to one uh, and one actually called me the other day. So it's not like we left on bad terms, but it's like if you're not in integrity, we need to set these goals and know what that looks like. Partnership is very difficult if it's not written and understood. So recognize what it looks like. Again, competition is on here. Stay ahead of your competition. Right? So like my wife was saying to me, uh, I think yesterday or something, because she's a little COVID um, scared, uh, a little COVID scared. So she's like, you're going to this event? And all th I'm like, I got to stay ahead of my competition. Otherwise, my competition will be there. Were there any title companies here? Nope. There never is. Because they don't. They're not consistent. They show up one or two meetings and then you don't see them again. Bria, tomorrow night, if any of you are going down to Bria, um, you'll see they have the trade show. When I used to go, sometimes five, six title companies. Sometimes just me. Be curious to see how many are there tomorrow. Build momentum with your dream team. Network with your dream team. Meet with them regularly. Build momentum together. These aren't people that are your business partners. I'm not talking you three together. That's a different, whole different training. I'm talking strategic partners of yours. You build it by networking, masterminding. What are we gonna do together? How often are we gonna meet? How often are we gonna do events and uh, trainings or maybe just go for steak and meet and strategize, right? So that's what we do with these guys here. We just do, it's a, it's a men's mastermind and we strategize once a month. You do have to learn to shut off. I haven't learned this yet, but you do have to learn to shut off, right? <laughs> You do have to learn to shut off. My staff will know they get text messages all weekends, nights, mornings. You do have to learn to shut off. Sometimes you just need a break. Otherwise, you'll get burnt out, you'll run out of fuel, and you will not be able to rebuild. How do I know? It happened. I still haven't learned it, but there was a point where I got very, very low. I was in the hospital three weeks, couldn't work for three weeks, bed rest. I wasn't sick. I just basically got so burnt out the doctor's like, you need to take a break. You're just, your body can't function because you're going nonstop. So sometimes you just need to take a break. And then rely on your board of directors for support. Right? Rely on your board of directors for support. So before I open it up to questions, I have one thing for Lex. I know last time I gave you um, your picture. So this time, so we came up with a... Does anyone know what a challenge coin is? So I encourage you to look up challenge coins. So challenge coins are basically a coin that military, fire departments, um, other organizations come up. It's just basically like a membership coin. Like this is our coin. So like before, I was talking to Marcelo and all of a sudden Marcelo popped one out of his pocket. So some people carry them, some people don't. So Lex, this one's for you. I wanted to present this for you just to say thank you 
So this is going to be yours. Um, but this is a challenge coin on the front, says Independence Title. On the back, it has our book. There's only 100 made, and you get one of them. So thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you for your relationship for so many years. So that's all I have, right on time. I told them I'd finish right at 9. Is there any questions? I will stay if I have to stay. The only thing is I have one rule. Just don't get too close to me. My wife will get crazy. <laughs> and the cameras are rolling. Um, see, I got this crazy thing here. This is like a air purifier. That's purifying my uh, space. <laughs> but does anyone have any questions? Five of you won books. So if you got a text message that you want a book, just come up, we'll give you one. If anyone wants a book, I have a few. Um, I think they're 10 bucks on Amazon. So if you got 10 bucks, you could just give uh, Vivi 10 bucks. She'll give you a copy of the book. Um, but I'm here to answer any questions. I want to be a resource for you. Uh, if you have any questions, you could always reach out to me, connect with me on social media. Uh, I, just, I, I like to just give as much as I can give because I know the value in, in giver's gain, right? The value of if I give enough to you, I teach you enough, I train you enough, I support you enough, one day you're going to get a deal and be like, this is who we want to call. I was on a call the other day, one of my investors called me, I've been doing business with for many, many years. His partner was on there, he's like, that's why we send all of our business to you. Because I have their back when they needed me. So thank you so much for tonight. I appreciate coming out during these uh, challenging times. And if no questions, everyone, get home safe. Be careful out there. And we'll see you next month. The successful ones will be here next month, right Lex? The ones that aren't here, I'm looking at the room. If you're not here next month, you know what that means. <laughs> Have a good night, everyone. Be safe. <laughs>